Hello, COM 115 students. Happy week eight. Um, that means we are in the middle of a 16 week semester. And um, so good job. Keep on going strong. Um, we now have the, uh, of course, the process speech is a few weeks behind us. And the informative research speech is um, looming up ahead of us. And so um, I want to take a few moments to say a few things that um, I noticed about the process speech that will be helpful for you going into the informative speech. And then a few things specifically about the informative speech that will help you as well. Um, one thing I want to make sure to encourage everybody to do in the informative speech that uh, most of you did in the process speech, but not all of you, is to utilize a note card. Um, like I said in a previous video, um, you can use a note card or you can get a piece of paper um, that's roughly the size of a note card. Um, but I encourage you when you are doing your speech, you know, you're standing back and you're holding a note card visibly in your hand. Okay. I um, do not want you to be uh, using notes that you have on your screen or off to the side somewhere um, out, out of view of the camera. Um, I really want to just communicate clearly to you that uh, a note card is your friend. You are not going to be penalized by being seen in the video glancing at a note card because that's the whole point. Um, that is one of the important skills that you're supposed to be learning through these speeches this semester. Um, because I, I'd like to just take a moment and, and ask you to consider um, what kind of settings is this class preparing you to speak in? Um, it may be true that going forward with the world changing as it is, um, maybe we'll be doing more and more speeches on the internet and fewer and fewer speeches in real life um, or face-to-face, -face, as they say. And uh, however, this class has not made that adjustment yet. In this class, we, are, we still have the traditional face-to-face -face setting in mind. That is the setting that we are practicing for. Therefore, in your videos, you want to be simulating that as much as possible. That's why we're dressing up business casual. That's why you're standing up. Um, and that is why note card. Because if you find yourself standing up in front of a stage, uh, a crowd full of people in real life, you can't conveniently read off of a screen uh, because it's not an option unless you have like a fancy expensive teleprompter. Uh, and so this, this skill of, you know, writing a full on complete outline and then rehearsing your speech. And in the process of rehearsing your speech, you condense that outline down into one um, or two note cards. Um, and then you're able to deliver the speech with the note card. That's really the, the holy grail. Go, all right, that's what we're going for. Um, so I don't want you to, to read your speech word for word off of a transcript or off of your outline um, or off of any hidden notes that are off screen. And I don't want you to read it word for word off of your note card either. The note card isn't for a transcript. It is for keywords. Like I said, you boil down your outline into talking points and then um, you know, have those written on your card, rehearse a couple of times using your card so that you're familiar with it, and then turn the camera on and go through the speech. Um, so this, this principle, uh, this fact that we're preparing for traditional style speeches uh, is also the reason why there are no video edits allowed, no, uh, no dubbing, no, um, you know, cutting and pasting. Uh, we have to be able to get through the speech in one continuous take, again, because that's how speeches are when they are delivered face to face. So keep in mind what kind of settings we are preparing for in this class. Now, as we go into the informative speech this week, you've got the informative speech outline due. 
And so I want to uh, point out that in the weekly folder this week, I have a sample outline for you. Um, that was a successful outline from a student uh, in a past semester um, who prepared successfully for the informative speech. Uh, I also have an outline rubric for you um, that tells you exactly how many points go to which part of the outline. Um, I view the outline as more of a planning document. Um, and then if your speech is somewhat different from your outline, uh, the final version of your speech is different from the outline that you turn in this week um, in, in some slight ways. I am not worried by that in the slightest. Um, let me screen share with you. Uh, I, I want to talk about the, I ask you to bold some things in the outline. And, and for some of you, the bolding seemed a little bit, um, it seemed to diverge from what, what I was going for. So I want to make sure to clarify that. Um, and also before I screen share, there's a new element in the speech and that is research. Um, I have also included in this weekly folder something that's a little different uh, that I don't use a lot, a PowerPoint, uh, and it talks about how to cite your sources out loud. So this is a complicated thing. Well, it's not complicated, but um, it, um, I don't know, it's just a lot coming at you at once. And uh, what I'm talking about is we have to cite your sources in the outline document and separately, you must also cite your sources in the speech video out loud using your voice. And there are two separate procedures for those two different types of citations. So in the, um, in the outline, I want you to cite your speeches in APA style. Um, and I give you a, a sample of what that looks like in the, in the speech outline. Um, you're probably used to MLA style or some kind of citation style where you know you quote unquote cite your sources um, and all those appear like in the very last page of the outline. But I also want you to plan out using your outline what you're going to say in the speech video. Um, and so I, I want you to cite your sources in the moment in the speech when you use information from that source. Um, and the kind of things that we need you to say out loud during the speech, these are called oral source citations, are slightly different from what APA style requires from you. Um, and you say it in a slightly different order. What we need is to know the source, the author, the date, and the credibility of the source. And this credibility is the most important piece. Um, it, and what that means is, let's say you're citing a source from an organization and the audience has never heard of that organization before. So the audience needs to hear from you, the speaker, a sentence or two about what that organization that you're citing is and why anyone should care what that organization has to say. And so that involves a little bit of extra research on your part, not only to find your sources, but also to, to, to dig into each source you use and make sure that that source is a real source that has good information um, from credible experts who, uh, you know, maybe have credentials in their topic or, um, or um, a track record of, <clears throat> of telling the truth and of having good, accurate, you know, up-to-date information. Okay, so with that said, I will now screen share with you. Here is our, let's see if I can view it a little bigger, one page layout. Here is our sample outline for the informative research speech. It starts off just like the previous outline with a general purpose, specific purpose, central idea, or thesis statement to inform. By the end of my speech, the audience will dot, 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 and you can put in whatever is true for your speech. For this outline, um, our topic is um, school-aged children in poverty. We have the thesis statement. This is a one-sentence summary of the speech. Then we get right into the introduction of the speech. Now notice um, the five functions of the introduction are labeled and bolded. I see there's an attention getter, giving the audience a reason to listen, audience connection, the speaker establishes her credibility, 
reveals the topic that we're going to be talking about in the speech today, and then previews the three main points. Point one, point two, point three. All right, so that's good. There are five points possible for the um, uh, introduction in this outline assignment. And I, as, a, as a person who's grading this outline, I'm very grateful to the student who did this because I can just see boom, 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 five points. I can get on with my life. Um, then we have uh, the body of the speech is an outline form, Roman numerals, A's and B's, ones and twos, indented appropriately. And I'm looking especially for this transition statement between main point one and main point two, and a transition statement between main point two, main point three, two points possible for transitions, as you'll see on the rubric. And then we also have the conclusion where we have the functions of the conclusion bolded. Uh, what I'm mainly looking for is restating the main points and then some kind of closure. And of course, it's still restating the topic. Now we have the references page. This is where all the sources are cited. And in this uh, outline assignment, the assignment calls for a minimum of six sources. Now, this is what APA style looks like. It's got the author's last name, first initial, the year that the source was published, the title of the source, and where we can go to find it. Um, same here, last name, year, title of the source, and it looks like this one is from a journal, Child and Family Social Work. It was this volume, these page numbers, I can go and find it. Here we have a source from the National Center for Education Statistics, the date. Here's the name of the um, specific name of the source that the center produced, where I can go to find it. Last name, year, name of the specific source, where I can go to find it. Okay. So this is what APA style looks like. If you use one of those citation generation machines on the internet, I am perfectly fine with that. Uh, also notice that these sources have a hanging indent, which means the first line goes all the way to the margins and every other line um, is indented as opposite from a regular paragraph. Why is APA style that way? Nobody knows. It's one of the great mysteries of life. Um, so this is an important part, but um, these sources appear up here in the outline themselves. And you'll, uh, you'll notice that some words are bolded throughout the outline. And I'm going to ask you to do this as well. Whenever you actually use a source, bold it to indicate to me where it is being bolded, all right? Now, for every APA style citation, let's use Rosen. Well, let's use Riley as an example. This is Claudette Riley, a longtime reporter for the Springfield News Leader. Um, if I do a find Riley, I see that uh, this is the corresponding APA style in text citation, Riley 2015. If this student was writing this paper for an English class, say, um, and they need to, to cite an APA style. If they use a piece of information that Claudette Riley provided, they would put this in here. Um, the APA style in text citations prompt the reader of the outline to say, aha, Riley 2015. If I scroll down to the references page, I'm sure I will find the full uh, reference citation. So that's how you cite an APA style, but this is not just an English paper. This is also a speech outline. And so the speaker is planning out what she's going to say to the audience to not only get the information across uh, to the audience, but also tell the audience where the information is coming from. And so she plans to tell the audience using her words out loud. She says, when searching Springfield poverty statistics, I came across Claudette Riley's article one map that explains kid poverty in Springfield, published in the Springfield News Leader, where she wrote, 
Um, and then she has the quote that she's actually pulling from the source. And she also gives us the year. This is true of the year 2015, um, which is five years ago now. And so it's not enough. To, uh, my, my, my big point that I want to get across here is when you're giving a speech um, and you're, you know, you're zooming through, giving the information, and then when you get to the added information from a source, it's not enough to say, according to Riley, and then just continuing with the source. Because um, obviously nobody knows, I mean, there's like a thousand or a million Rileys in the world. We don't know who that Riley is. Remember the audience members do not have access to your outline. They only know what you say. And um, so just pretend like your audience is a, is a super skeptical audience and you have to prove to them every single thing that you are, every single point you're trying to make. So instead of saying, according to Riley, um, I need to say, um, according to Claudette Riley, who's a reporter for the Springfield News Leader in 2015, uh, who wrote an article called One Map That Explains Kid Poverty. Uh, and then I can go on with my speech because I've done my due diligence in telling the audience where the information I'm about to tell them came from. All right, so I've got my like video notes here. So six sources in this speech. The sources should be cited in the outline in APA style. They should also, in the outline, there should be some evidence of you planning out how you're going to deliver the oral source citation during the speech. And then when we actually listen to the speech, there should be six oral source citations from you, the speaker, uh, that appear throughout the speech at the point in that speech where you use the source. There need to be six unique sources um, you can use any source you want uh, as many times as you want. Uh, and if, every time you tell us, every time you use information from a source, you want to tell us the source that it was from. Um, but six unique sources need to appear. No visual aids are required for the speech. Um, six sources. Remember all of the normal video requirements in addition to holding the card in your hand so we can see it. Um, there's no editing, stand up. Uh, neutral background, um, be visible from the waist up so that we can um, assess your stage movement and gestures. Um, new, did I say neutral background already? Anyway, um, so I've covered a lot of material in this video. I know it's a little bit of a longer one, um, but there's, there's just some things that I just ha had to communicate to you and um, had no other way uh, to communicate to you um, because, of course, we are not seated face to face. Um, now, if you have questions on this, um, make sure to send me an email. Stop by my virtual Zoom office hours, which are still Tuesday, Thursday from 11 to 1. Um, or you can do both. But um, the main thing for this week is the informative speech outline is due. Um, and then make sure to avail yourself of the other resources that I have made available, including the assignment sheets and the PowerPoint. And then also, as always, I'll see you in the discussion boards. And the discussion board for this week is over. Um, the chapter for this week, which is chapter 11. And surprise, surprise, chapter 11 is about the topic of informative speaking. All right, have a good week.